We have seen how measurements uh, can be applied to quantum states, but now let's see how we can actually extract information about the probabilities and the expectation values and variances of these measurements. So before we have only measured one single qubit, which is known as single shot measurement. Now let's consider the scenario where we have many copies of the same state and we keep measuring them again and again and again. So again, we've got our measurement device here and we keep feeding it the same state, many copies of state psi. And what comes out is a bit string of plus ones and minus ones. What you can do is you can count the number of plus one outcomes and we're gonna uh, denote it by capital N of plus one and you can count the number of minus one outcomes and we will denote it by N of minus one. Then what you do is uh, intuitively the ratio between the number of plus one outcomes divided by the total number of measurements will be approximately equal to mod alpha squared, which is actually the probability of obtaining the plus one outcome. And similarly for uh, the fraction of uh, minus, the number of minus one outcomes divided by the total number of measurements, it will be very close to uh, mod beta squared. So you can see that in order to extract any information about the probabilities, you have to repeat the same measurement on a fresh uh, copy of your state again and again and again. And because these measurements are random, you're not gonna get the same answer every time. However, you can ask the question, what is the expected result when I measure in the Pauli Z basis? What number should I get if I repeat the same measurement many, many times? Maybe you remember from your probability course that the expectation value uh, of some random uh, uh, variable, here I'm calling it Z because we are measuring in the Pauli Z basis, it is given by the probability of the plus one outcome times plus one, the value of the outcome, plus the probability of minus one times the value of the outcome, which is in this case minus one. So we know that the probability of plus one is just mod alpha squared times one, it remains mod alpha squared. And the probability of the minus one outcome is given by mod beta squared, but this time we are multiplying it by negative one. So the expectation value when we measure in the Pauli Z basis is given by this expression. In direct notation, we write it as follows. We write the uh, operator in which basis we are measuring and we enclose it in these square brackets. But really it's just a shorthand for saying that uh, we are multiplying the bra of state psi times the uh, operator times the ket of state psi. So let's check it. Let's take the Pauli Z operator and sandwich it between our state uh, given by the column vector alpha and beta. Its bra is given by this uh, row vector. So we've got the row vector psi times Pauli Z matrix times the column vector um, psi. When we multiply it out, we've got one multiplying alpha plus zero times beta. So we've got alpha here. And then we've got zero times alpha minus one times beta. Sorry, there should be a minus one. And then you get the following expression, which agrees with the expectation value that we have uh, computed above. Again, because the, number, the measurements are random, we expect some degree of variance in our measurement outcomes. And again, we use the same definition as from classical probability theory, that the variance of some uh, random um, variable is given by the expectation value of the square of that variable minus the square of the expectation value of that variable. So we have already computed the expectation value of z. We don't need to do that anymore. We just square the previous expression. All we have to do is we have to compute the expectation value of z squared. So again, that's the probability of getting a plus one outcome times plus one squared, which is just plus one. Add it to it, we, do, we have the probability of the minus one outcome times minus one squared. So minus one squared is one. So actually what we get is mod alpha squared plus mod beta squared. Often in physics, you will see that uh, um, the variance is referred to as fluctuations. Uh, and that's denoted by this capital delta Z squared, and that's really just the variance of Z. And in the Dirac notation, we again have this expression for expectation value of Z squared minus the square of the expectation values. 
That's all.